Right. How did you, I mean, uh, I know like for me personally, that would be, it would be hard to digest. It would be hard I to couldn't. handle. Interesting you use the word digest because that's what this disease is about. Oh, yeah. I cannot digest, I could not digest what I was given because it didn't fit anyways. I, I just, you know, I'm not a scientist or a mathematician or a physics major or anything, but everything I look at, and that is what my artwork is about, is it's very geometric. It's a lot about micro, macro. It's like taking all the little parts of every component in the world mm -hmm. and making it into a big picture. It's about taking chaos and making it into order. And so physicists and mathematicians and whatnot love my work because I've developed my own style. I have never copied anything. In fact, there's another thing I wouldn't mind mentioning. I was highly trained in the first three arts of mine. When it came to becoming a painter, I decided at 38 years old that I was going to become a painter. I had no idea what that journey would be about. However... Now, did you know you had new, uh, no idea, or did you have certain preconceptions and then realized you had no idea? No. I, it just kind of, here I was weaving away. I was always, I was born designing clothes and fabric, and that was a natural thing in me. So that was starting to make sense why I found the weaving. But just to finish that weaving part, I found out in my late 40s, um, yeah, and more after my near death, um, that I'm part Indian. I'm Ojibwa, and that then filled the whole story of why I was so happy when I found fabric and thread and nature dyes, which I colored all my own threads and all of that, and it was like, my God, that's, that's the Indian part of me. That's the basic earth part of me that craves for nature, craves for simplicity. Did you feel like something fell into place Abs when you learned that? Absolutely. I mean, it was the last part of that equation. Right. And then we get into starting to paint at 38. Couldn't even draw a straight line. <laughs> Never drawn anything in my life. Did you have a vision of what you wanted no. to paint, or you just had no. this vague idea no. that you no. wanted to be a painter? I wanted to be a painter. My third husband said I was a true artist, and I asked him one day, why do you say that? What do you mean? And he said, well, you know, I'm, I dabble. I'm a musician. I'm this, I'm that. But he said, you live it. You live your fabric. You, you, everything is about around you. Your whole ambience is about fabric and, and nature and, and he said, I feel so pseudo myself, he said, because I try a little this and then I do a little of that and he said, and so I fell in love with him because he was the first human being in my entire life that didn't give me a bad time. He honored and revered what I was from a very deep place. And I had been starving, again, starving. Isn't it interesting, yeah. you know? Yeah, how these things all fit in once you have done your homework. And to me, that's the greatest homework in the world for every individual, getting to know who you are and living your authentically. And so when I started to paint, I said to my husband, Ramey, who is, is dead now, um, I said, you know, I'm going to do this one different this time. I said, I'm not going to get instruction on becoming a painter. I'm tired of hearing about everybody else's way. <laughs> so I started, and I literally started by doodling. It took five years to develop my first, I would say, 
real painting. Real painting. <laughs> Which, okay, and that is, <clears throat> if people are listening back to this, that is a bit of a loaded statement. I mean, what is a real yeah, painting? Yeah, what is but a real painting? My style. Painters will Let's understand say that. Yeah. Sure. My style. I finally found something. And then I Did you know it when you found it? it? Well, yes. Uh, because I was miserable until I did find it. Because when I want to do something, I dig in so deep. And, to, and so it's hard work. I mean, I'm not fun to be around. It's like, leave me alone and let me get to this, you know. It's so filled with passion. And so uh, that took five years. And then as that one was getting bigger and better and, and very whimsical and happy, then I started being con compared to Kandinsky and uh, Calder and some of those that I hadn't. I said, who are they? You know, then I'd go read their book because I didn't want to know anything about a painter at that time. And then I developed a second style, which took another five years, and they have become my really serious work, uh, and that is, I called them puzzles. Mm. And it was the puzzle of my life, but now they have become mosaic pieces. An important but subtle difference. Yes, exactly. And there's layers and layers of, of paint in every little nuance that I do and it, it, it's and I'm very I'm very happy with them. Uh, people one woman asked me a couple of years ago in the state she said, "You seem so comfortable. She was a much better uh, figurative drawer than I was. And by the way, I got scholarships for that after 15 years of painting. Hmm. Um, I wanted to go full circle. Uh, I'm an abstract uh, surrealist by nature. I want to know what isn't not what already is. I want to go beyond. And people have said to me, oh, Diana, you've got a brain that doesn't need drugs. We take drugs to get a brain like yours. And I said, I know, it's true. You know, it's like I'd probably be dead if I tried anything because I've, I've got a real imagination, which is wonderful. And um, I'm whimsical and I'm playful. And I'm dead serious. And so, no, but nothing in the middle. You mm -hmm. know, I, I really am not. And, uh, and so um, I've lost, there was something we were discussing over that, and I kind of lost that for a second. Um, the part of uh, becoming the painter. And as I started to develop my own uh, thing as a painter, I had no idea that journey that it would take me on. And then I almost died, but I had quite a few paintings by then. And when I got out of the hospital, I had nobody left from my past. Uh, I had been abandoned over years by many marriages, by I, uh, men seem to love my uh, independence and my wonderful creativity, but once they got a hold of me, they tried to control it. Do you, was that, uh, would you say that was similar to all your marriages? Yes. Now, the reason that I ask is because, uh, I mean, I was married once myself, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of emotion. It's a, I mean, it's a big deal. It is. And to, it's huge. So, what come, the question that comes up in my mind is, just going to wait for that. The question that comes up in my mind is that because it's such a big deal, to put yourself through that ordeal five mm -hmm. times, I mean, was it was it a quest? Was it, like, did you feel like you were trying to achieve something? Or was it just that you were told that you were supposed to be married and you felt like you needed to... Um, you know, that you needed to do that and keep trying, or like, I'm, I'm kind of wondering out of that section. We oh. can sit here. Oh, yes. sure. Yeah. Actually, here, I would love to take a second and take my shoes off because I've been in them all day. Sure, absolutely. And I saw yes. you in your socks and I was oh, like, I oh, know. you know what? I I know. Well, I spin without shoes, ah. I weave without shoes, ah. I usually don't wear shoes. And these are the parts of me that, um, 
that realized how Indian that is of me, if I may say it that way. <laughs> you know, I, uh, uh, and, and then I think a lot of the feistiness in me comes from I'm Celtic as well, and I'm Spanish. Huh. So, you know, it's like, yes, I, you know, I've got this did, thing. Did That's you want to sit down here? Yeah, okay, sure. Um, so... Um, is this okay? Yeah, this is great. Um, so, in answer to that part about... What, um, oh, I was wondering about your marriages. The and what, marriages. What was sort of behind it? Well, you had mentioned one thing, and that was, you know, you're told as a child that this is what you're supposed to do, or your environment that you're in, this is what is expected of you. Uh, and so I did it. And then I got hit in my marriage, and so I left. But even my parents said, stay. Now, you see, to me, that is absolutely unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Your parents want you to go back to what had hurt you, what could hurt your children when they're young, all in the name of the status quo. I'm sorry. Uh, so then I had a second one, and I married very, I was married to a very wealthy man. I didn't know that. I don't marry because of money or no money. What uh, was it about him that you liked that made you decide to marry? He was kind. He, he, <clears throat> he was good with my boys. Uh, he was good with me. He was older than I was, and now, when I look back now, it was, it was my dad. First one was, you know, young love. Right. Had my children. Second one was dad, and I eventually, I left a very, very wealthy left life behind because, again, it was all about things, boats and cars and houses and equestrian centers and blah, 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 you know? And I'm going, who am I in all of this? It was also the 70s. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> it was what I would say are, are, were our wild breaking through times, the 60s, the 70s, uh, experimental uh, relationships. Uh, um, I, I, I got married uh, a virgin. <laughs> and what did I know? You know? <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> Except I had children, you know? <laughs> and so there was all of those issues. And then my third husband was about... Uh, so, oh, just, uh, okay, so when leaving your second husband, yeah. was it just that you, you kind of got fed up with all the trappings and found that you couldn't exist as yourself within that? Is that kind of what that, we're talking about? That's, that's pretty much right on. It was, um, it was taking care of things. Mm. And I'm going, you know, I've never been materialistic. I like people because of who they are, not how much they've got. And so there was that. Then there was what? the becoming a slave to materialism. You know, you have to have somebody look after your houses or you have to look after them. You've got to go and take the barnacles off boats. You've got to, you know, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot to do. Right. And I'm thinking, but I'm not interested in any of this. And then there was also the 70s was, was experimental uh, relationships and that kind of thing. And we thought that might, we were very honest and open about it, but it we thought that it would bring us back closer because we were being honest and open to each other. We ran a wonderful home. Um, we, it, it was fine for a while, and then it, was, it really did separate us. 